This video is a record of three winter sessions on the Lion Creek section of a river crouch. Flowing east to North Sea, this Essex estuary is perhaps best known for its spring ray fishing. Although the odd ray had been caught here in December, for me that's too much of a long shot, so my approach at this time of the year is a scratching catch anything method. So I've set up two fine tip continental rods with braid. The rigs are free hook and attached to grip leads, with one being a short wire version and the other one being clipped down. Bait is lugworm, either fresh, frozen or sticky, with some sprats for tipping. My first session was fishing off a walled embankment to the east of Lion Creek. I've parked off Creeksy Ferry Road and have walked along the embankment alongside Riverside Holiday Park. The spot I'm fishing is behind the Holiday Park, halfway between the creek itself and Bamberger's, which is at Baltic Wharf. In order to get some distance, I'm standing on top of the embankment for casting. The humming, an engine noise that you can hear, is from the unshipping of timber at Baltic Wharf to my right. My boom rig has been cast slightly closer in. It's pretty cold and there's a nasty drizzle, so I'll only be fishing for about three hours to the top of the tide. Although I prefer to fish a lot of venues on the ebb, that's not the case on the crouch. Here, I never seem to do any good when the tide is running down. As you can see, there's a bed of weed at the base of the seawall, which bass patrol in the summer. The incoming tide has just reached that, but you can see the mud flats are still exposed closer to the entrance to the creek. There's a steady tow from right to left, and this will ease towards the top of the tide. By all accounts, this area has not been fishing that well, but if I am to catch, it's likely to be towards the top of the tide as it starts backing up. As I'm winding in, I'll cover the locational details, first with the regional setting. The Crouch is situated between the Thames and the Blackwater and is just north of South End. In previous videos, I've covered nearby popular venues along the Thames estuary and intend to spotlight other venues of the Crouch. Homing in on a Crouch area, the main marks are the Roach at Pagglesham, the popular stretch at South Fanbridge, and across the river, North Fanbridge, Burnham and Hollowell Point at the mouth of the Crouch. The sections I'm fishing in this video is to the west of Wallasey Island and opposite Creek Sea. Essex Marina and Baltic Wharf are to the east, and Black Point, just off a map, is to the west. I've indicated the four parking spots along Creeksy Ferry Road. Fairly long walks are required to the two spots I've chosen to fish, which are circled. The first session is from the right of the creek, and the other two, some distance to the left. Like most estuaries, this one is full of crabs, and in the summer you need plenty of bait to get through them. In January and February they're not that active though, so I only need to replace a little bit of my bait. I'm placing small bits of fresh lug on size 3 Nordic Bend hooks on this boom rig. I'm casting my rigs to my right, which is up tide but downstream. My rods are placed facing down tide on this incoming tide, and I'm looking out for drop backs or small knocks. My distance rig swings round more with the tide, so my boom rig is cast much further away from it. That minimises the chance of a line's crossing. If not much happening, occasionally dragging the rigs might create some interest.
Dragging the bait seems to work. I'll get my first bite on a distance rod. Unfortunately, the bike was missed and there's no fish there. At least that's a promising sign though and justifies choosing this spot. The clip down rig has size 4 Aberdeens and I'm selecting slightly larger lugworm to put on this one. Clipping down isn't always needed, but it does help achieve further distance if that's what you want. After the brief dry spell, the drizzle comes back. The dragging the bait trick works again, this time for the boom rig. I bite straight away after putting the rod back on the tripod. This time though, I think I've connected into something.
That's a relief. Blank avoided. A small dab. Tides right in now, covering the marginal weed, and with the tidal pull slowing down, I am expecting a little bit more action. I miss a bite, but shortly afterwards get another one. It doesn't develop, but it's worth striking and putting in.
At first, I didn't feel anything on, but approaching that marginal weed, something gets stuck in it. It doesn't feel big, but when bites are at a premium, I don't want to lose anything. I'm taking my time and gently trying to ease it out of that snag. Well, it's fish number two, and it's a ruckling. I know it's pretty difficult to get excited by catching a ruckling, but when it's really hard, anything will do. So, two fish from five bites, and for the whole time I was here, I didn't see another person. A couple of days later, I took a long walk along the seawall footpath on the left side of Lion Creek. With heavy rain the day before, I wasn't overly keen on this session, and I almost didn't bother having passed a number of fields with a lot of surface water on my way to get to this venue, and I had to negotiate part of Crixie Ferry Road, which had flood water running across it. I set up the same gear on a little bit of salt marsh past the first point. Bait was leftovers from the previous session. A few dug lugworm, which were just about usable, and sticky black lug, which again, is not the best quality, but it will do, and sprats for tipping. I decided to stick with a boom rig, but swap the free hook clip down rig over to one of my sole rigs which has only got two snuds. The salt marsh here is eroding quite quickly and you're fishing over a couple of ledges. I'm fishing a spring tide so I'm expecting the water to come right up to where I'm fishing. If it does come well over the bank then I move to the sea wall to my right. The river is slightly narrower here than where I fished the other side of Lion Creek so I'm expecting the tide will run to be a lot stronger. I'm still only going to fish about two and a half hours up to the top of the tide. I'm putting on a finger stall so I can cast at distance but I will be working my way much closer in, particularly when the tide comes right up. I walked along this stretch towards the end of December and saw a couple of people fishing here. Between them, they caught a dozen or so whiting with a couple of dabs, so I noticed some fish here. However, conditions were different then, and I wondered whether the extra fresh water might make a difference. For the walk to this point, I've cut down on gear, leaving my rucksack at home. Even so, I'm wondering whether the 40 minute walk would be worth it. However, it's not raining and it's better than being stuck indoors watching television or tying rigs. As you can see, my rod tips are pulled much further round than they were at the previous location. This time I'm facing slightly downstream and looking towards where I fished before and the island of Wallasey. It's bitterly cold, so the trapper hat, gloves and smock need to come on. No bites so far, but unlike last time, there are a few crabs about and they're stripping the bait.
tide is up and some of the water is starting to come over the salt marsh. If there was a strong wind with waves crashing over, I would have moved already. But now's the time to start thinking about moving towards that sea wall. I am still expecting the water to come up a bit more and I will be fishing on for about another hour. However, I haven't had any bites yet. Fishing from saltings, I prefer to be fishing an intermediate or small neat tide and be very aware of a line of retreat. This tide was 5.1 metres at Burnham and 4.8 at North Ambridge and I wasn't expecting the water to come this high. The extra rainwater we've had over the last few days has probably added to that and it also looks like it slowed sport right down. It's now time to start moving to slightly higher ground. In hindsight, I probably could have stayed where I was, but I didn't want to risk getting my gear wet.
I stayed for another half hour until the tides had turned and started going the other way, but with all of that effort I couldn't muster a single bite. With weeks of poor weather and more rain, it wasn't until the end of February that I could motivate myself to come back and have another try. This time, I decided to fish with just wire boom rigs, which I store in this plastic pencil case. This is a long wire version, with size 3 Nordic bent hooks on 8 pound fluorocarbon. It's a sensitive rig, which you can nail to the bottom. I'm still hoping that I might be able to catch a couple of tabs. In the run-up to this session, the weather conditions have been slightly better, although I'm still not that hopeful, since this is still a spring tide. I was hoping to fish here on a neap, but I couldn't get out on one of those tides. Same bait as before, so I'm still scratching for whatever might be around. However, it is getting towards the time when the rays should start appearing, and another angler did turn up to fish beyond me, specifically targeting the rays. I'm not sure how he got on since I left before him.
Once again, it was very quiet, and things weren't looking good. However, to my surprise, I then noticed a tiny little knock. I decided to wait to see if it would develop. Another little knock followed, which I decided to hit. I didn't think I had anything on until there was a splash on the surface. To my relief, this whiting was a blank saver. Come the top of the tide, a large pleasure boat decides to speed up the river, creating a mini tsunami. Fortunately, I had already moved my gear back, expecting the high tide to spill over the saltings. So fortunately, nothing got soaked or washed away. I fished over the high water, but unfortunately no more bites were forthcoming. So, with only one bite and one fish, this ended up as another poor session. However, in reality, because of the travel restrictions, I could only really fish a crouch, canvey, or at South End, and I should be grateful just to be able to get out. A crouch, like other estuaries, can be good over the winter, but you have to have the right conditions, otherwise many blanks could be on the cards. 